the terrorists of the 7th in particular, were, were deeply gleeful whilst carrying out acts of unbelievable barbarism. And that's something that, that that's something I'm, I've been thinking about a lot because to be, to be doing something you think is, is right but, but is evil is one thing. To be doing something that is evil and, and being joyful about it is, um, and, and, for, and for people around you to celebrate it. And then at several degrees of remove, <laughs> Uh, that people who think they've got the same cause as you would excuse it or, you know, say, uh, well, context or, you know, much, much like that. all sorts of things like that that are just alarming. And, and I, you know, I've often thought actually in recent months of there was a late, uh, a historian and writer called Gita Sereni who died about 20 years ago, made a great impact on me when I was growing up. She wrote, among other things, the biography of the child killer, Mary Bell, and also the biographies of uh, Stangl, the, the camp commandant of Treblinka, who she interviewed, and also of Albert Speer. I remember reading an interview with Gita Sereni towards the end of her life, and she, she was not a religious person, but she said, having spent a lot of her life considering evil and staring at evil and writing about evil, she said, it, it, it's, it feels like a force that descends. It's just, it just manifests and there's no other explanation for it. It's not, it, it, it isn't just about some problem in the developmental process or simply a matter of education or opportunity. Is that on top of all those problems that do exist, sometimes there is an incarnation of evil in the world. Well, in one way of thinking about that, I think even technically is that because I've been thinking about this a lot in relationship to these new large language models, you know, and there's a statistical probability that any given concept will be associated with any other given concept. And if your mapping is technologically advanced enough, you can calculate those statistical relationships, and that's what the large language models do. And then you can start to see, you can start to see you can start to map mathematically what the psychoanalysts called complexes. And complexes are systems of ideas that occur in each other's proximity, and there's a core to them. And one of the ways of imagining the theological representations of, of evil, the legions of devils, let's say, that are behind the, the generation of the bottomless pit of hell, is that they are representations of complex of ideas that hang together. Anak, I think you put your finger on the core of it, actually. The core of it isn't evil. The core of it is gleeful evil, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So it's not yes. merely the evil. And it's the... It's, it's the, rejoicing well, in evil. Yeah, well, yeah. and that, that's, it's, that, is, that is actually the core of, of sadism from a mm -hmm. psychopathological perspective, right? It's not... Mm -hmm. It's positive delight. It's quite... It's, it's, it's a multidimensional characterization. It's positive delight in the unnecessary suffering of others, mm. right? And the unnecessary element is also cardinal because that plays up the element that's parody. You know, so in Auschwitz, for example, one of the games the guards used to play was to have the, the prisoners who got off the train cars shivering and frozen and accompanied by their dead relatives who, you know, died of asphyxiation or, or froze to death in the cattle cars They'd arrive at the camps and then they'd be compelled to carry wet sacks of salt from one side of the camp, which was the size of a town, to the other, and then back. And so it's a parody of work, right? And it's a, it's a demonstration to the person themselves that not only are they suffering for every, for all the reasons that they're in the camps and by the fact of the burden that they're carrying, but the utter counterproductive pointlessness of the painful labor is also emphasized and insisted upon and and then delight taken in that and that is a very dark thing to observe yes i mean there's one of the i was uh, in the uh, one of the maximum security prisons in israel earlier this year and saw the hamas terrorists from the seventh who had been captured alive and one of them was somebody who i, I recognized from uh, one of the atrocity videos uh, who had thrown, there were two young boys, about 10 and 12, 
they were with their father, they went into the safe room when the bombs started falling. And the Hamas terrorists came and they saw them go and they threw a grenade and the father threw himself on the grenade and was killed in front of his sons. And then, you know, one of them lost an ear and the other one lost an eye. And they were staggering around the main room of their house, weeping and wailing in the most uh, unforgettable, awful, awful way. And one of the terrorists came in and who'd just killed their father in front of them, came in and opened the fridge and helped himself to the food. And the youngest of the boys, in, to in total trauma, and you know, said, that's my mother's food. And the terrorist turned to him and said, where's your mother? I want her too. How could, a, how could anyone do that? You, uh, well, you, you put your finger on it. Well, you know, that idea of the descent is like um, one of the things that God accuses Cain of when he becomes bitter is opening the door to evil. He said his suffering wasn't merely a consequence of his failure in life. It was a consequence of his failure tempting, to op tempting him to open the door to evil. And so if you think about it in terms of these complexes of associated ideas, is there are ideas that if you let in, they bring a host of other ideas with them. And a host is exactly the right phrase. And you might be tempted in a moment of weakness to invite something in that you think that you can control or that you could bend to your own purposes. But the problem is, is that you're inviting in a complex that has been around forever and that once lodged inside you might prove uh, what uh, that whatever defenses that you might think you have there to mount are trivial in comparison to the power of what you've invited in. And that is, I, I think you can think of that technically, and it is a terrible thing. And it is the kind of things that, that are warned against at the theological level, although that's a very complicated thing to, to untangle. And so, all right, so let's, let's turn from that a bit. So that's the sort of thing that you're going to explain as you're communicating with your audience. And what you're hoping to demonstrate to people is that, <laughs> is the logical conclusion of the sorts of games, for example, that are being played on the university campuses. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, well then, of course, the problem with that is, at least to some degree, is that that complex of ideas that takes possession of people in the circumstances that you're describing has that end in mind. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, let's turn our attention to the to the situation in the UK, if that's the case. I mean, 